to the third out of four small things we should meet in this lecture, and that is hypothesis testing. Actually, I started this uh, uh, talking a bit hypothesis testing like just uh, at, at the end of this example. Otherwise, I presented, actually, I have presented to you only a confidence interval method as such, at least in the outset. Uh, confidence intervals for one mean, a confidence interval for the difference of two means, and I hope you get the feeling that you actually have a method that is the bootstrap method that could give you confidence intervals for basically anything you could dream of computing. It's, it's, and you, now in, in our book we have chapter two, three, four, five, six, seven, and as of chapter seven, if you will see chapter seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 13, uh, different situations come. Hypothesis testing, confidence intervals here, hypothesis testing, confidence intervals there, 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 there. And this is just an introductory course. Then the, we have 20 courses here at our university that takes you in different directions and extensions to where you can apply these st statistical ways of thinking and how to learn from data in more general and more complicated settings to be able to work with Vestas and others. They need it. They need intelligent guys like you to survive in the long run. SAS needs it. Other people need you uh, to survive there. Um, so we need to be clever about it. Instead of using all this theory, we can use this uh, approach here. It's, and it's not, this is an interesting thing because this is, have, this is well known theory actually. It's 10, 20, 30 years old, uh, this thing. But it's not really 100% out there yet, actually. I gave a talk at Nova just a few weeks ago discussing, trying to have them maybe do some more bootstrapping rather than some of the classical testing. Because everyone was taught the classical approaches. All uh, engineers, chemistry people, whatever, out there in Novo Nordic, other, uh, Vestas, other places, Dong, and they know all these standard techniques, but not so many of them know these, uh, uh, this bootstrapping, resampling techniques. So I'm pretty happy about being able to present that to you because that's not so commonly done necessarily if you take a random sample of basic stats courses around the globe. Uh, not a majority of them will include resampling techniques, but that will change. Definitely. If it is changing, I changed it, and other people will change it for sure. So that's a part of the future, using raw computing force to do stats rather than the basic thing. So this is an important lecture today for you, for the future of what you're going to do. Ah, this was a long talk. To, uh, just to go that we can also do hypothesis testing. We don't, we, we don't have to stick to... Um, Stick to confidence intervals. And I al already used what is on this slide, which looks terrible, but was um, using this basic relationship, which I've touched on previously, between confidence intervals and hypothesis testing. That is, the confidence intervals consists of those possible values that are accepted by the, the two-sided, at least, hypothesis test, right? And so we can use confidence intervals to do hypothesis testing, right? We can actually make a yes-no decision on all possible hypotheses. We don't, the confidence interval doesn't give us a p-value up front, at least. It just gives you a yes-no to whether you can accept something or not, or whether you should reject something. So to that end, we can do hypothesis testing by looking at the confidence interval, a good tool. We can actually take it one step further and get p-values, both one and two-tail p-values. I'm not going to go out this tangent here, but we can get p-values. Go away. From, from the bootstrap uh, distribution, right? I sort of sketched that already. We could look at the bootstrap distribution and then see how many percentage is actually, if we want to test zero, here, right? We can see how odd is zero to follow a hypothesis test, or rather, how odd is the data in the light of zero. And we can take the probability, the number of outcomes going beyond above zero or below zero. Um, in, in the tail, in, in the small tail, we should say, we should either, of course, either we are on one or the other side, we should see whether we are unlikely. Uh, large, uh, largely to the left or to the right of this. 
And we can turn this into a p-value and make a it, make it d- decision of whether we want to accept or reject. Let's try it, the idea. Let's try to make a one-sided test in this uh, cigarette consumption example. Let's say we would like to test that no, no change has undergone with the group of females here. They didn't learn. They didn't get to a change. Versus the alternative that we saw an improvement. Right? So either we, we assume that we would like to uh, prove uh, that they actually improved here. How should we find the p-value? Well, we should make sure that I think I have turned it around compared to uh, <laughs> the figure I have uh, showed you. Let me see in R here. You can see what I actually count here is how many of these are actually below zero. But then we should be clear on whether we uh, f- flipped it around, whether we subtracted one from the other or vice versa, actually. I think I changed it compared to... Um, now I get confused, you can see. I would claim. I turned it in a way such that I have the rare event up here. So I may confuse us all, but let's see if I can find it here. My means. Ah, I think I'm in the wrong place here. I'm confused. Ah! Why don't you help me? Why don't you help me? You just want to enjoy my confusion. Uh, oh, that's okay. I know how it is. My mean diffs. If I'm confused, hey, why shouldn't you be also? Um, now we see. Ah, this is better. Phew. I, I looked at the wrong one. I, I should look at the my mean diffs here to get this p-value. So I think I should just make sure to say I'm actually confusing a bit more here because now I jump into the other situation. I was doing another hypothesis test for the two sample thing and that was not the one that I started here. I started the one sample with a cigarette consumption. Let me do it properly now. Let's see if we can make it work. Cigarette consumption. Let's go there. Blah, 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 blah. Yes. And there, the observed ones were positive. And that's why I didn't do any mistake, apart from confusing myself in what I was doing when I did it. I should look at the amount to the right, to the left. It's, it's good the day is soon over here, so we can get on with our lives. Um, and that's also what I wrote here. Yes. So actually, this one was 0. 0.00 something small. I should believe in what I did previously and not think I can do it better while I'm here. <laughs> That's, uh, yeah. Um, so, we reject, right? Small p-value, so we reject. This is a way to also extract p-values from the bootstrap distribution. And we may confuse ourselves on the one-tailed, two-tailed issue. <laughs> That's, That's very easy to do when you're in the middle of it. Uh, 
But if you manage to not confuse yourself too much about this, it is possible to either take one-tailed probabilities or two-tailed probabilities from the bootstrap distribution and extract a p-value like that. This was hypothesis testing. Here we are. This was hypothesis testing using 